here we have one of the supposedly best entry-level ADV bikes on the market and today I get to do a first ride on it and see do I want it or not <laughs> let's get the first Royal Enfield first ride going What's going on guys, Chase on Tools here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell, Georgia. In front of us I have a 2022 Royal Enfield Himalayan. This is Royal Enfield's kind of entry level to the ADV market. It has gotten a ton of attention online so I cannot wait to do a first ride on it today. If you guys are new here, first rides are the series where I ride a motorcycle around for the first time and tell you guys about it and see how it goes. Let's get the key out of there, let's get it there. But before we get started, let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. And that's what it looks like and that's what it sounds like. And guys, this video is not sponsored, but it is supported by our website, WBRGarage.com, where we build dream bikes and then we give them away. If you guys want an entry to win our current season's motorcycle, you guys can click the link in the description and get yourself some points to win it. Now guys, uh, Royal Enfield, I don't think I've ridden a Royal Enfield before. And if I have, there's only been a couple. I am super excited today to get a ride on this. And uh, if you guys have been watching our live on two wheel show and probably heard me talk about it in videos i'm currently in the market for an adv bike i don't know which one i'm going to get i feel like i keep getting close to deciding and then i find another bike or i ride a bike and i'm like oh my gosh that changes everything by the way this is entry level this is forty five hundred dollars here at mountain and then msrp is like 54 there's not a lot going on but it's coming in at an incredibly affordable price so I want to see what this bike feels like riding it on the road and potentially at the end of the video find out if this is something I'm interested in and would buy. I think that's what I'm going to start ending first rides with. Would I buy it or not if I was the ideal customer? So you guys stick around and let's find out if I'm a, I'm a buy or a nigh. <laughs> Let me get my phone on the quad lock here and then we'll get this thing going. So guys, as far as specs go on the Himalayan, uh, horsepower and torque is nothing fancy. Horsepower is at 23-ish, and then torque is at 24-ish. So we're not talking groundbreaking numbers. All right, kickstands up. Got my knees bent a little bit. I'm Guys, I'm 5'10". I got a 32-inch inseam. As you can see, I've got slightly bent legs. I do have some pretty thick Icon boots on, so keep that in mind. Get the dash cranked up here. <laughs> this thing is hilarious to have. All right, let's get her cranked up. Uh, guys, this is a used bike, by the way. So I did note that it has an aftermarket exhaust. The previous owner doesn't seem like they've tuned this bike at all because it didn't want to crank up on it for us today. But uh, after we uh, rode it around a little bit, it's doing all right. So let's get this first try started, man. Perfect. That was the perfect thing to happen. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, so guys, before we get going too far into this first ride, if you are a fan of Discord, we have a motorcycle Discord full of motorcyclists. So if you're watching this video, I imagine you're into motorcycles. If you like Discord as well, we've got a whole community for you. Go check it out in the link in the description. And there's nobody coming, uh, so I'm going. Woohoo! Redlining at 65 hundo. Let's go, little boy. 
Let's go little Himalayans. So guys, it's been interesting kind of slowly coming into this ADV market. And I have just discovered it late in my riding career, but I have fallen head over heels in love with ADV bikes. That's what gets me really excited about this Himalayan. And I do want to make something clear right off the jump. First rides, if you guys are new, are a road review. So I will be reviewing the 2022 Himalayan on for road use. I'm sorry, dork in the road. I don't have access to dirt to ride this thing. Uh, if you guys want to see an on and off road review, you can go check out a YouTube channel called Dork in the Road. Uh, he makes some phenomenal ADV content. I'm personally a fan and I think you guys would enjoy the content too. But in his Himalayan review, he literally says in the beginning, why would you test this motorcycle on the road only? And here I am. Alright guys, let's talk about body position real quick before I run into the back of all these cars. The seat is very soft on the Himalayan. I would uh, I would put it in the too soft category. I could see my butt getting a little tired of the seat, but it is pretty wide, but it seems kind of hard on the edges. I can feel them kind of digging into the sides of my butt. As far as uh, body position goes, my legs are, uh, I'm in kind of like, you know, I describe it many times as the chair position, but it's a position that I can easily stand up on. And then as far as my back goes, my back is upright and my arms are relatively high. Nothing crazy high, but you know, they're in a good position for if I were to stand up, uh, since we don't have any modes to talk about. <laughs> I love that neutral is a zero on, on the dash. We'll talk about the dash later. Um, the foot pegs, we do have the rubberized grips. Uh, that is to help with vibration on the road. And then if you're doing off-road, you can take those little rubber inserts out and get more grippiness. They are, uh, they're in a pretty comfortable spot. I like how wide they are, especially for such a tiny motorcycle. But yeah, guys, the handlebars are pretty high. I'm kind of happy with them, though, because, you know, this is an ADV bike. It is made to ride off-road. And if I were to ride off-road, I'd stand up. And if I stand up and I bend my legs just a little bit, my arms can uh, kind of lay at a really great spot. That would also make it great for touring on this bike too, because you can stretch your legs and still reach all the controls of your bike. You know, just another awesome thing about uh, ADV bikes in that regard. So guys, let's talk about the uh, Himalayan in like kind of a city setting. We're, you know, just kind of chilling around with traffic. And uh, the bike comes in at a wet weight, I think of around 469 pounds, if I remember correctly. Which, if I'm being honest, I was reading the spec sheet and 468 pounds or so seemed really heavy. But now that I'm on the bike and I'm moving it side by side, it doesn't feel as heavy as I think I came in expecting it. Personally, when it comes to ADV bikes, I've ridden a couple 600s and I've ridden some, uh, you know, bigger ones like 1200 Pan Ams and stuff. I tend to be more of a fan of the uh, bigger ADV bikes. So I'm interested to get some ride time in on this uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan because it seems like such a cool little bike, but it's lightweight. So, you know, red respectively like you know so there are some like very heavy ADV ADV bikes I'll be interested to see how I feel on the road uh, I would really love the opportunity to have maybe a long-term loaner Himalayan so I could take it off-road because in the past I haven't been a huge fan of doing off-road on lighter motorcycles for whatever reason my brain likes the heavy things so it's it's kind of strange but there's a definite pro in having a lightweight ADV bike if you do go over it's a lot less weight to pick up you know um, like that Pan Am is not light if you drop that thing. But yeah, guys, going back to city riding on this thing, I love the steering of the handlebars. You have such a far handlebar lock that it makes it very easy to kind of like ride at slow speeds. I've really enjoyed the ability to kind of just like weave around traffic and stuff. But yeah, having that wide turning radius on the handlebars makes this bike so good at just kind of like getting in little crevices. Another thing that typically is an issue on an ADV bike is they, they take up so much space. I don't feel like that on this bike at all. There's been a couple of times when we did the camera car run that I was squeezing in between things. And I don't know if it's because the windshield kind of thinly comes up or if it's because of the lighter weight of the bike. But it makes me feel like I'm small and playful. And that's a pretty fun feeling to have. I, I don't know if I've ridden an ADV bike that necessarily has that feeling yet, 
and I've really enjoyed it so far. I kind of love this thing for just scooting around town. You don't you don't need a ton of power. These are the uh, cones I was saying that I was. I don't know. You you just feel like you can just like wee. <laughs> Uh, it's a very playful and fun bike, and I've I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this bike far more than I expected to thus far. Can we skip ahead of all these people while scooting? Let's go on an adventure. Going on an adventure? So stupid. <laughs> I basically just skipped that car. <laughs> this bike reminds me of the fun little mini, all the mini bikes that I've ridden, the Grom, the Z125, all of uh, the Monkey. I don't know why. This is a full-size bike. It ain't like a mini bike or anything. It has a lot of the fun that you get. And it comes in at an incredible price. So, so far, the Himalayan is like hitting a lot of uh, check marks for me. I will say that the mirrors here on city streets are not good. Uh, I do not feel like I have a good understanding of what's going on around me. Did it die? Oh, I thought it died. Too quiet. Yeah, the mirrors are so small, I find myself having to double check them a lot because I just don't feel confident in them. So, would definitely like a bigger mirror if possible and throwing her over. Hell yes, man. Hell yes. <laughs> I don't know what's been going on with me lately, but we rode the Indian Scout Rogue for a while. And I use that as my loaner bike and um, it has very little tech. This bike has very little tech. Uh... But I'm starting to at least appreciate the lack of tech. By the way, there's an ABS button, and I might be an idiot, but I've pressed it a couple times. Supposedly, you're able to turn the rear ABS off. I can't figure out how to do that. Currently, the rear ABS is on, and that's just how it's going to be. But the maneuvering around town has made this thing a super fun little bike. I could totally see myself owning one of these and just using it to scoot to work and back. I would have no problems with that. As long as it had ABS, which obviously, like I said, it does. It's been super fun and very capable off-road considering the price point. So I so far kind of love it. And they have the red color scheme. We've got a really cool black and matte black combo, which I think looks great. But the red and black, bro, I am totally here for it. Also, I do want to be clear, this bike is not fast. I don't want people watching this video thinking like, oh my God, it, it, he's really happy with the bike, so it must be really quick. The bike's only got in the 20s for horsepower and torque. There's no speed racer wins gonna happen with this bike. Scooting around town, I haven't gotten myself into a situation where I really feel like I need more power for what I wanna do on this bike. Now, that being said, this is a 400, I think, 11 cc single. We're going to be getting on the highway up here. And there's a couple things I'm going to be looking for personally. One is how does it handle the highway power wise? You know, like American highways, these psychopaths are going like 80 miles an hour. Is that going to be a problem with the Himalayan? And how is the vibration going to be? Because if you can go 80, great, but if, if I feel like I'm being shook to death, then that's not really sustainable. So those are the things I'm really interested in with the highway, and that's what I'm going to be looking out for once we uh, do this highway entrance. Speaking of the highway, we also do our 40 to 80 poles, so that should be interesting. Let's, <laughs> let's see how the, how the Himalayan does with the 40 to 80 pole. All right, boys. I don't know how this is gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be great, but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do our best and forget the rest. All right, guys, 2022 Royal Enfield Himalayan 40 to 80. Might take us some time, but we're gonna do it. On your marks, get set, go. We're going, we're still going. No cars, we're tucked. We're going red line to red line, baby. We're not going to make it. Oh, we're not going to make it. We ran out of runway. I hate it. That might be the first time I didn't successfully get to a 40 to 80. Oh, no. A little Himalayan that couldn't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I guess I could have dipped into the side lane, but that felt kind of sketchy. All right, guys. We are here on the highway with the Himalayan. So... 
we are in the top gear which is fifth gear here and I feel like I could probably get to 80 but it's not gonna be in any fast fashion I will say I am getting a little vibration in my feet my handlebars but nothing compared to what I thought I would get if I'm gonna be honest I was I was kind of prepared for this thing to be shaking all over the place but that's not been the case so far I feel like this is totally fine the windshield does seem kind of small but I'm not getting any wind on my chest I'm getting a little bit of wind on my arms but the wind seems to be going well over my head so as far as wind protection I'm totally fine it is a windy highway this highway is always really windy I do feel like I'm being moved around just a little bit but nothing that I would necessarily be like concerned about as you can see I'm currently going 82 I'm pin throttle and I'm right at red line so I don't think I'm going to get much faster than this but the fact that I can get a little above 80 means I am totally fine with this bike and highway use I always want to be able to get to 80 because that's kind of the flow of highway traffic at least where I am so I'm always looking for that as far as stability and steering on the highway I feel like it's not bad you know we've got more ADV focused wheels so they're a little bigger I don't feel the most stable here on the highway but I've got no problems I can comfortably just sit back and as you guys can see I got no problem keeping up with traffic overall I wouldn't say it's a bad thing for touring I don't think this is gonna be the ideal bike for touring though we do have a cable actuated throttle so obviously we don't have anything like cruise control but I will say the throttles not that heavy probably about a medium pull on the throttle I don't think my hand would get too tired holding the throttle open like I literally can just rest my hand there and the throttle staying where it needs to be so do we have cruise control no is that a big deal also not really all right guys let's shift down a gear and let's get ready for our big turn let's get this uh let's get the himalayan leaned over see what she can do looks like we got a bit of a little bit of slow traffic so i feel like we might catch up throwing her over the bike is so light it just very happily gets thrown over in a turn there's no weight to fight Travis going way slower than i expected yeah guys the light weight of this bike does such a good job uh it it adds to that playful nature you know i can just throw this thing around treat it treat it and abuse it like a little toy and it's just chugging along guys before we keep going let's jump to the camera car and see what those guys think about the royal infield himalaya thanks for our buddies over ricardo hey so my favorite thing on this little royal infield is the fact that it is a tried and true agricultural little tractor that 400 cc single is hilarious and i love it this thing isn't gonna win any races uh but it'll take you everywhere uh, it is one of my favorite quote unquote entry level adventure bikes there's a reason it's used all over the world thank you guys in the camera car and thank you even more so to cardo if you guys want a discount on the best bluetooth unit you can get for motorcycle riding we got a 10 percent discount in the description that discount code also helps the channel out so thank you guys for uh, using it and even more so thank you cardo all right guys uh let's talk about the power delivery on the himalayan uh, like i said you're not going to win any land speed records but as far as street riding if i'm going to be honest i got no problems with what kind of power i'm getting out of this thing it's not throwing me back in the saddle i don't really have to hold on for dear life if i want to get some speed behind me i've really got to build up to it all that being said i'm i'm not upset about it at all i've got the little torquey power to get me through the traffic with no problem and I can get up to 80 and really for a bike like this that cost what this bike does I don't really ask for much more than that you know this I can buy this bike today for 4500 bucks and it does not feel like that transmission wise it's felt good as well every time I click up a gear or click down a gear I get a good satisfying click uh, I don't really care that much that it's only a five speed and not a six speed that doesn't really deter me i will say uh the brakes now here's the thing i wish the brakes were a little stronger 
but then I keep in this video I have to I have to keep reminding myself that this bike's only 4,500 bucks or 5,400 brand ass new. I don't think the brakes are great. I think they're fine, and I think for a bike like this, that's okay. I don't. Uh, they're not in that kind of worry me category. Uh, jumping back to transmission real quick, we can talk about the gearing. So far, uh, I feel like the gearing is exactly where it needs to be. There's never been a point where I'm like, man, I wish that gear was a little shorter or a little taller. I feel like uh, Royal Enfield nailed the gearing on this thing, especially if it's going to be used for off-road. But just for on-road, I got no problems. Rear brake, wow, rear brake is way stronger than I expected that to be. That's actually funny, that's, that's surprising. It is kind of strange to be sitting here at a red light and I can easily flat foot. Like I'm not talking like barely flat foot, like I got no problems flat footing. And being on an ADV bike that I can flat foot's a little strange, I'm not used to it yet. Speaking of things I'm not used to, gorgeous Ferraris. That was a dope car. <laughs> I would love to review it on a car review channel called On Four Wheels. Hey, Ferrari. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no way Ferrari's going to loan a car to a channel with a thousand subs. <laughs> would, how hilarious would that be, though? All right, guys. Let's talk about the controls and the cluster on the Himalayan. Uh, so, overall, I think everything... This is one of the situations where it's fine. It does its job incredibly accurately or adequately uh, for a bike that costs this I don't really think I would expect much more from the controls they they do feel a little uh, what's the word they don't feel super high-end they, they shouldn't the bikes doesn't cost that we don't have adjustable levers that's not ideal but the levers I can change out I'm not too worried about the levers uh, the grips are okay. I don't have a real grippy feel on them, and they feel like they're metal, and maybe they are, and maybe that's what they're supposed to be, but they're okay. I don't really have, like, any strong feelings about the grips or the controls. Uh, I might put a different pair of grips on it, though. Now, as far as the cluster up here, I've got to say, I don't know what it is about this cluster, but I freaking love it. Everything is, all the important stuff is just, it's digital or physical, and it works perfectly. I love the little compass here. I just think it's hilarious to have. Supposedly you can uh, sync your phone to this little device on the right side, and you can get like turn-by-turn -turn navigations up there. I feel like that guy is great and I love it, but I do feel like it's a little out of place on a motorcycle like this. It's just putting tech in a place, it's like that's the only piece of tech on the bike. And because of that, it feels a little a little weird. There's something about this like old school dash that I'm just really here for. And it adds to the, uh, the tanky vibe that this bike has. And yes, I said tanky, as in this bike seems like some old uh, Russian tank that has no tech in it but it just it does its job totally fine i really this bike really gives i'll last longer than the rider of this bike that's what i feel like when i ride this bike and uh is it raining are we going through rain are we on an adventure first ride in the rain let's go fam let's go i'm not even worried about it i'm totally okay with this bike being like a element fighter and it's because it's just you and the bike i don't know we'll talk about more about it here in a minute but guys i'm gonna pull off and we're gonna do a little walk around of this bike it might have to be a little fast since it's raining on us but uh we're gonna do a little walk around and uh i gotta say i'm kind of falling in love with the way the himalayan looks i know that's kind of crazy but it's happening, and I don't know what to do to stop it. So there's that. Oh, our first walk around in the rain? <laughs> That's awesome. Let's do it. Absolutely, man. I got my new Revit gear on, so I ain't even worried about it, man. I got all my waterproofs on. Shout out to Revit for the gear. I'm here for it. And yes, if you're uh, new, guys, there is a person that owns our spot now. It has been stolen from us, precious. I think I went up here and did a did the other one here. We'll do it right here. 
We'll do our little walk around. All right, the little tractor that could. All right, guys, 2022 Royal Enfield Himalayan. Super simple bike, nothing crazy going on, but super cool bike. I I freaking dig it. Uh, looks like we got a 17-inch wheel in the back and a 21, I would assume, up front. Yep, 21-inch front wheel. <sighs> the simplicity of this bike really makes me enjoy it, and there's something about the looks that I really like. I I don't know what it is. This uh, colorway is probably my second favorite colorway. My only better colorway than this is the one that has the red tank. I think it's either in the red in the front or the back up here. It looks so cool. You got your uh, little rails up here for uh, both protection and for um, attaching things to. If you guys notice, moving the, f the handlebars, it doesn't move this. It's actually attached to the motorcycle. The exhaust is kind of cool how it frames the engine. The engine is super simple, super old school looking. Uh, love that. Um, this, I love the graphic -y there. And then we've got all the, uh, the grab stuff on the back. And I've seen these uh, set up with... Um, side cases as well and they look great with side cases so it's not just uh, trim trim down that it looks good so I'm here for it I think I think the front tire is hilariously big for this bike but it's I'm just I'm totally here for it I did notice we kind of got like a double fender here I like the way it looks I like the beaks you guys know I love my beaked bikes but um kind of interesting there i think if i were to buy the bike the only really thing i would do is maybe put a put some sort of like fender tuck in thing but i, I mean maybe i don't know might just leave that might not do a damn thing to this thing <laughs> how hilarious would it be if i rode for 10 years and then the adv bike that i finally settle on is a freaking five thousand dollar royal enfield it's kind of hilarious that's about it, guys. That's all the that's all the looks. I, lo I love it. I think it's awesome, and I uh, can't wait to finish this video up and ride some more. Uh, before I do that, guys, I'm going to grab my phone off of my quad lock, and uh, I'm going to take some shots for our vertical peeps over on Instagram, at c 2 Picks and uh, TikTok, at Chase on Two Wheels. So if you guys uh, are fans of vertical content, go check us out over there. Give us a follow and check out all the cool stuff we make. I'll be right back. All right, guys, that's it for the vertical stuff. Back to YouTube. Before we get out of here, we're going to do our turnaround test. And we got to figure out who is this bike for and would I buy it if I was in the market for this specific bike. I love the little graphic that pops up there. <laughs> it's, it's so cute. All right, steering stem lock test. We might, we might have a, a big contender here, boys. Jiminy Christmas. That's dude, that's gotta be in the top five, if not top two. Holy crap, Himalayan. Let's freaking go, fam. Alright, guys, uh, before I decide if this is a buy or not for me, let's talk about who I think this bike is for. Uh one, this bike has the, one of the lowest cost of entries of a motorcycle on the market right now, especially in the ADV space. So basically anybody can afford this thing and that's brand new. That's not even used, uh, which I think is phenomenal. This bike is very cost effective, but it does not feel cost effective or it doesn't feel as cost effective as the bike actually is, which is obviously the best situation you want to be in. I feel like the barrier to entry is low because it's a relatively lower CC. It's, you know, 411. The power is adequate. And I feel like this might be one of, if not the best entry level into the ADV space that there is. The only reason I won't say it is or isn't is because I haven't gotten to ride it off-road. So if you guys are looking into getting into the ADV space, wow, my voice just cracked all the hell up. I would definitely recommend you guys looking into some on and off-road reviews. Now, if I can get contact to Royal Enfield and we can get one of these to ride off-road, bro, I'm here for it. But as it currently stands, I don't have a contact to Royal Enfield, so I can't give you guys that content yet. The ideal customer is somebody wanting to get into ADV that hasn't been riding before, or if you don't know if you're going to like ADV and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this 
would be a phenomenal option because you're going to know if you like ADV or not if you get this motorcycle and you actually go out for a ride. Now, would I buy this bike for the, you know, we'll just call it MSRP of 5400 bucks brand new? Uh, absolutely. I would 100% buy this thing. The small CC doesn't scare me off yet. The only thing I would really love to know is how well it does off-road, or better, how I would do with it off-road. That's the only thing that kind of holds me back from this bike, but I think it's a phenomenal buy for the price, and I have enjoyed every freaking second of this motorcycle. It, it's 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 kind of awesome <laughs> actually like as a full package this bike is dope and i freaking love it and guys that's about all i've got to say about the royal enfield himalayan i like this thing way more than i came into it expecting to so <laughs> we love seeing that if you guys want to see other adv bikes i've done first rides on there's gonna be a link for you here on the video thank you guys for getting to the end of the video you're officially in the outro crew and i love you a little bit longer you guys ride safe and i'll see you on the next one later